I'm trying to get this in a good position so we can see everybody. Oh, look, my mom will move for us. <laughs> good job, Robin. Um, so the babies are filthy, so they are going to get their first real baths today. Um, Miss Robin has not exactly been on top of things overnight. <laughs> and so if you can see up close a little bit, uh, you can see, um, kind of what Drew and I were talking about, um, even before they came. Robin's not so, so good at the keeping them clean. She's not as dedicated as Daisy is to, oh, look here, Robin. Because like Daisy gets to it before, oh yeah, she pooed. It's coming from his butt. So they're all gonna get in on some genuine baths today. Yesterday we kind of rinsed them a little bit to avoid putting soap on them. But they're two weeks old now, so um, there's nothing wrong with using a little bit of baby soap. Especially when they are covered in puppy poop. Poor Miss Charlotte. Um, oh, oh, big news, big news. I guess not big news, but... Um, Ocho's family got back to us on a name. And um, I thought it was brilliant. I love it, love it, love it. I hope you guys love it too. But they are naming him um, Henry, as in Henry VIII, as in Henry... Henry Ocho and look he's gonna give them a great special thanks for naming me surprise by opening his eyes big and wide look how big my eyes are little Mr. Ocho he was born so teeny tiny I'm so proud of him I thought his eyes might be delayed a couple days just because he was smaller and needed to catch up a little bit, but um, it's par for the course with Robin, at least with her other litter. We um, had to give him baths. It's like when they hit almost this age, it's like, I don't know if during the night she just is sleeping through them nursing and so they just kind of poo throughout the night and she doesn't clean it up. And then in the morning what we have is messy puppies. So, because um, they don't get like this really during the day, it's mostly at night. So I suspect that that's all it is. Um, Robin, hey, it's okay. Can you shut the door? Okay. Uh, Daisy came and saw Robin's puppies. She really enjoyed it. In fact, Robin, um, I really, I wish I had recorded this, but, um, it's okay, Robin. Um, yesterday evening, after we shut off the live stream, um, Daisy's puppies were kind of whining, and she was being a little lazy and, um, not really getting to it right away. Robin, it's okay. Come here, sweetie. I'm gonna show you. It's okay. You're a good girl. Um, so she was, uh, Robin could hear Daisy's puppies whining from over here, and, um, Daisy was in there with them. If she had not been in there with them, we would have let her go in there, but what she did was she ran over to the door and started kind of scratching at it, and we heard a growl come from Daisy, but Robin, the door wasn't latched shut, and so she was able to kind of nose it open, and she, uh, kind of nudged it open. The puppies were continuing to whine and she walked in with, in like a very submissive way, almost as if to say to Daisy, like, I mean no harm. And um, she just walked in and kind of looked at the puppies. Daisy, you know, growled at her more as she got a little bit closer. And um, as soon as I got to her, I just picked her up and pulled her back. But uh, it seemed that Robin, um, when she did her um, wet nursing duties the last time she had her litter, uh, she took to it really well. And so I think um, 
then now seeing Daisy's puppies and they're a little, little bit younger, and especially when she has a litter herself right now, I think she kind of almost um, understood, like, these are, these are puppies that are part of our pack that we need to protect and make sure they're okay. So even though they're not her puppies, I think she recognizes that they're, they're puppies that are part of our pack. And um, I thought it was really, really awesome. And so um, sometimes what you can do is if you are supervising, um, all of this should be with supervision, or I should give the don't try this at home disclaimer. But what we'll do sometimes is um, when they're being like Robin and um, we'll do almost sort of like a doggy nanny type thing where uh, we will, like if Daisy's outside, if her puppies are whining and Robin hears them and wants to go in there, like last night when she wanted to go in there and Daisy was in there, if Daisy had been outside, um, we would have gone ahead and let her go in there and check on them because what they'll do when the other mom's not in there is they'll, they'll check on them, they'll clean them, they'll feed them. Um, and then, you know, once they're kind of like tucked back into bed and happy, she'll return to her litter and then Daisy will come in and be none the wiser. And so it's really nice that they both really like each other's puppies and they're drawn to them. Um, because now that, um, now that every, we've got everybody healthy and we're kind of moving forward and puppies are getting bigger and stronger, um, uh, Daisy and Robin now are both, we can uh, integrate them a little bit with their puppies. We hope that we can, um, we're going to start by introducing them together outside, but we're hoping we can have them get along while kind of sharing their puppies. Um, it doesn't have to be a requirement though in order for us to do the little doggy anything. Um, but it is nice when they start have, experiencing this burnout for them to go play with their pack mates and kind of do some of the old stuff that they're used to doing around the yard and not having to be rushed back in to take care of the babies. And so um, that'll give them a little bit more freedom if, since, you know, Robin is more than happy to go in and nurse Daisy's puppies um, until they're happy. And she'd probably bring them in here if we let her. She'll just combine the two litters. Um, we're hoping that when they, in a couple of weeks, that we can put them all together when um, they reach, they'll reach the stage where um, they're in the pen themselves and by default mom is usually outside of the pen but she comes and checks on them. I gotta run. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. Love you. Love you too. Um, and so as they reach that stage where mom does more of a check-in as opposed to just being with them 24 seven, it'll be much easier and they will be more um, willing and cooperative to do um, an arrangement where the puppies come together. So um, it's all, it's, um, it's kind of like a, a trial and error type process, but it's very, very fascinating how you know the animal kingdom works and how um, watching it kind of watching it in action when we for instance when we have these two litters and Robin realizes there's other puppies in the pack that aren't in her litter and it's just it's fascinating to me to see the the laws of animal kingdom be replicated in our house because of their their instincts and stuff. I'm just now seeing the chat, so I wanted to say good morning to Heather. <laughs> And good morning to Hush, 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 hush. Hush. Part of the problem with having eight dogs is that if one dog sees like a shadow, and they bark, and the next dog barks, and then the next one barks, and then the first one repeats, and 
It's like a snowball. Um, and that says she's a tired mama. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, hi, Rachel. Yeah, did you see <laughs> Charlotte? She, uh, <laughs> poor thing. Yeah, I don't know if you were on when I was showing everybody. Poor thing got pooped on all night. So she's going to get her first bath. Won't be anything crazy. I will actually probably just bring like a little bowl right here and kind of do a bit of a sponge bath. But um, yeah, so yeah, Robin starts getting a little lazy. With the, she's wagging her tail over there. She starts getting a little, little lazy when they're bigger. I think they. Um, uh, yeah, I think they. Oh, you okay? You're good. You're here. Those scary shadows. Yeah, I know. The um, it's funny because the dogs think that they are so fierce. Even Daisy was out on the porch once and she was barking and I went out there to see what she was barking at. And I couldn't tell what it was, but it was something that was behind the garage and she couldn't quite see it, but she was barking at it like, you know, um, that, you know, raising her hackles sort of barking. And so finally she, because whatever she was barking at wasn't coming out from behind the garage. She finally um, went trotting over there to go scare it away. She went right around the corner and for like half a second I couldn't see her. And all of a sudden she came racing back with her tail behind her legs and she was like shrieking. And just doing that. Arr, 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 arr. Sorry Robin. So um, <laughs> they think they're so tough but um, when push comes to shove they're really all talk. All bark. Sorry, your mama doesn't keep me here. That just says hello since we got you on. Hey, Chancy, Chancy. Can I see your eyeballs? See if you can see him. Here we go. What a good boy. See, look at my eyeballs, Mama. I'm a big puppy now. Check his ears. His ears are open so he can hear our voices. Good boy. He's even laying like an like an infant, like a human infant. Mm, you are so precious. He's one that loves to sleep on his back. You're filthy too, Mister. My goodness, look at that big old belly. You gotta quit the meal. <laughs> Did you see that, Heather? He is a little porker. You eat so much breakfast. Now we gotta clean you guys up. <laughs> They're on my heart. I know, isn't he just, ugh, they just. They're the best. All right, let's go get the uh, bucket.
a rubbing dog. Let's move your food and water. Let's see who's up first. You okay, Mama? I wonder if anything we changed out in her. So. Oh my. All right. So I usually I start with the cleanest and go to the dirtiest to keep from getting the water dirty right away. So we're going to find the cleanest. Trying to be Ojo. nearby she's right over here he's not too dirty so I don't wanna <laughs> you know there's like nothing about this that's fun for them so these puppies if we're lucky I mean usually we don't even need to give them baths at all um, we only do baths like uh, um, on pickup week we'll do baths to have them smelling fresh and ready to go home to families instead of smelling like uh, brothers and sisters sleeping and you're so warm and cozy it's like being born all over again waking up to being wet and cold and loud and bright especially with those open ears sometimes I'll use hair dryers on them because I mean you know like towel drying only goes so far but they can't shake or you know they can't shake it off like dogs, you know, usually do. 
so sometimes I'll bring the hair dryer out so that they can warm up, they can dry off a little faster. Ocho, Mr. Henry. Henry L. Ocho. Jesse, did you want to be next? And it's pretty clean too. Thanks, AJ. But we have found though that oftentimes when we get them bad, it'll them poop. And so we don't like, <laughs> so many times we've gotten them all cleaned up and uh, rinsed off, dried off, we put them back in the pile and then they poop all over everybody else that's been cleaned. So I like to give it a second before, it's like the warm water and it relaxes all their muscles. Her eyes are super open. That was a very big yawn. Not as open as they could be. She's sleepy. Hey, Mama. Mama says it's okay. Girl, Mama. When I have Drew here with me, we'll do like a little conveyor belt where one of us will wash, the other one will rinse, and then we get them all done in like 10 minutes. Oh, Jesse. Here. You can get through real quick. Clean up his poop. I really think she just gets lazy when she's sleeping at night. Because during the day, she is pretty good about keeping them clean and uh, looking up their messes. And so I think she just, now that she doesn't have to be awake during the night and we're not waking her up to get orange latched and, you know, all that business. So she's probably sleeping pretty hard at night now that she can. Because she's been through a lot the last couple of weeks for dog. Poor girl. Alright, you wanna go see your mama? Okay, chance. Is it your turn? I think it's your turn. Jesse, you'll be up soon. You wanna see mama? Oh, I know. Here comes the poop. There's some water on it. Not drop it in the Oh, dang, did I think we missed? Oh, perfect. Uh, you know what? I think it's some good music in here. That's all right, there's gonna be a lot more up here. Oh my goodness, I know you gotta wait because you got more poopy on you. Whoa! <laughs> I hope you guys were able to see that. <laughs> oh my 
my goodness, I just like, <laughs> he just literally sprayed me with poop. I don't think he reached me, but. <laughs> I'm sure my arm was in the way. That was kind of gross. <laughs> Are you ready for this, Heather? Because he's got good aim. I was kind of like scrubbing him and I gave like his tummy a little like squeeze and he just lifted his tail and out it popped. Rabbit shot. There you go, Robin. These are gonna smell so good when you're done. And this is gonna be a perfect spot to start um, potty training them. As you can t probably see, it doesn't get any cleaner from here. If we were to not potty train them, the, the pooping, the peeing, it just gets exponentially worse from this point forward because when they when their poop is made from like regular puppy food, um, she stops eating it completely. And so uh, like this little bit of mess we have right now, that's only from the stuff that she's missed and hasn't gotten the, if we, if we had in, if we'd been collecting everything that they've been pushing out, it would be much, much, much worse and very stinky. I know, I know, but I want to dry you all the way off so you're not chilly and then we'll go on the heating pad. Okay, bud? Your mama's watching. Your mama said lots of love. Oh man, you're filthy. <laughs> Let's get peeking first. Let's see how she does. Okay, you're both about the same. Ooh, does that feel nice? Does that feel nice? Does that feel nice, Jesse? You like that? Good boy. Yeah, see, there's Mama. Look what a good boy you are. their poo stains really, really badly for some reason. Uh, and so, like, if we don't get it off right away, it'll stain their fur. And I suspect Charlie got, she got so clobbered by poo that I suspect she might have a little staining. Fortunately, though, um, it, uh, it all comes out by the time they're, like, old enough to go home. Even before that, it'll probably be any stains that they get now will be gone in about a week or so. Mm, Mr. Jesse. Man, you really enjoyed that bath. Yeah. You were Mr. Whinykins up until that. Now I got a new Whinykins chance. It helped that you got on the heating pad.
that be boy Jesse. Jesse is very much a people dog. Sometimes we talk about, um, you know, if they don't take to people right at, like when they're or when they're young at this age, it doesn't mean that they won't be a people dog. Um, it's just that some of them will see it really, really early. And so when we point out that, like Jesse, for instance, he was whining that whole time when he was sitting right there, and then when I picked him up, he just stopped whining and he's happy. And um, even when I had him in the bath that he's never had, never done before, um, and we just don't usually, um, it's not, it's not typical to see those traits popping out so early. And so when we do see them, it's just really awesome to know, like, he really is going to be a, a people dog that, that loves his family. Um, many of our puppies, families have picked them, I don't want to say sight unseen, but um, basically not having seen them in person. And that's really difficult and I hate having to do it that <clears throat> way, especially with all of the long distance families we have. Um, but, and we get asked this question um, a lot, but when families pick their puppy without having met them personally. That's basically how I, almost every puppy we've had has been picked without meeting first. I think we've had two or three that the people were able to come and meet them first ahead of time before they had deposits on them. But um, back to my point, um, by the time they're going home, especially with how we do like the visiting and the FaceTime phone calls, um, we've never had a single family um, come to us and say that they that he it was like a mistake or they wish they'd gone with another puppy in fact it's usually yeah it's almost always the opposite they'll come back and say I'm so glad that I ended up that somebody else had that dog and I ended up going with this one so um, we've not had a, a family who's at least as far as we know, we haven't had a family come to us and say, because we'll check in once in a while, you know, if it's been like a year and we haven't, we haven't heard from them. Um, sometimes we'll reach out and see how they're doing. Oh, a little chilly. We're going to have to get the hair dryer. Turn the heating pad up a little bit, okay? Uh, this is getting a little gross, so we're gonna get over. You weren't drinking the dirty water, were you? Alright, so we've got one more and then we're gonna pull out the hair drawer. That's a child. Poor thing. Hey, look at me, I got pooped on all night. Oh, <laughs> he 
Those are your lip brows. What's the matter? It's okay. Okay, I'll come help you get some food. Get the Bella baby. Um, the Bella baby is right there. Oh darn it! I I miss I miss Mochi. Mochi? Yeah. Huh. Oh, I didn't hey mom, bath. mom, you need to wash. You need to wash the Bella baby too. Yeah, I get her bath. She'll get one. So um, once I finish. Oh. Once I finish keeping my eyes open, I'll help you. Okay. <laughs> that looks. They're really wiggly. Let me open. She's pooping. She's pooping again. Oh no! Get the poop off her. One of them pooped at me. See where it landed? I can't see it. <laughs> they, so I had them right there, and he pooped straight out, and that land hit. This was in the way, and so it hit this, and then. And where is it now? All those spots. That's all. That's all puppy poop. Chances puppy poop to be specific. When you're done drying her off, can you wash the bell, baby? I'm smelling yep. her puppies. She's like, why do they smell different? Be they up. don't smell like the poop I left them in. Miss Charlotte does not like baths very much. Yeah. Hi, darling. Hi, darling. Hi, darling. Darling, you Oh, in. goodness. You just pooped all over me. Where is it? Ah, see? All over the towel? That's what Robin was just looking up. I knew a poop was coming. Man. I knew it was coming, and I still got it on me. Oh, Robin, it's okay. Complain to your mama how I'm torturing you by making you get clean. Mama said. If your mama's still on anyway. But look at my big brown eyes. I'm such a hubby baby. Mom. Yeah, sweetie. You know where my rock is? Clean this up. My rock is? I do not know, sweetie. Hi. Oh, I got a little bit.
One, two, three, go! Oh no, no, what are you doing? Don't spook that because listen, don't forget, hey, their ears just opened, so loud noises are a little bit scary for them still. Okay. So we want to be quiet. So let's put this down so we don't accidentally shake it too loud. All right, Miss Mochi. Mochi, Mochi. I see her. I hey, see her. hey, don't mess, don't, don't mess with that, because then it makes it shaky and. I see you. Don't you. Want it. I see your mom. Yeah. All right, Miss Mochi. Let's see what you think about that. Your sisters are not here for it. So I'm, um, so I'm, so I. So mom, yeah. I, I, so I have a cold. Can I, can I sleep with you guys? Um, we'll talk about that later today when Dad's home. Okay. Um, so I see you mm. on the camera. She's so happy. Yeah, she's happy. She's like, I love bath. Let's do this more often. A little spa day for Miss Mochi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look how open her eyes are. I like her. I like it, Mom. Oh, I hope I hope your family's on. I hope your family can see. Yeah. Family can ah. see you. You're so pretty. Oh, baby, yawn. What a pretty puppy you are. Pretty girl. Your eyes are so big. Mommy. What a precious face. Oh my goodness. You're soaking wet. I told you it's not here. I know. I'm not here yet. Mom. Why do you take the colors off? Why do you take the colors off? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really sure what you're talking about right now. The colors. The hold colors. on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me finish with this, okay? We'll pull out the hair dryer and dry off. You see all the blood? What, sweetie pie? You see all the blood that is blood on? Oh, oh, that's garbage from when we were, when I was uh, wiping Daisy. No, Mom. After moms have babies, they bleed a little bit. Yeah, I know, that's what that's from. No, Mom, that's from Daddy. No. A dog went over oh. him. Okay, if you say so. If you say so. He said that to me. He's really sad now. Where's that going, Mom? Where's that going, Mom? Um, he had to run to town for something. To run to the store. For medicine? No, medicine. I think I was getting some food. So, Mom, now you're done? Almost. I'm trying to find a dry spot of the towel to... And Mom! Yeah. Do you want to watch something in the living room? Yeah, but I'm waiting for Mom. Um, to... Would you mind helping her find something to eat? Uh, yeah, but She's I... She's waiting on me to I do have this. To... I'm past my shower date, so it's got to oh. be quick. Bella, come on. Do you want to get something to eat? Your dryer and dry yeah. them off. A little faster with that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, you want to eat? Hey May. Hey May. Hey May. Hey
squishy rickets. So when we do, when we give puppies baths, of course we have the heating pad, but we raise the temperature up to, since they're wet, you know, but um, you can hear them kind of moaning, they're shivering a little bit, so um, I pull out my hair dryer when they're so cold. Hi, Carlos. I don't know why I clicked this, not the target audience, but I'm glad I did, adorable. I'm glad, to, I'm glad you did too. Thanks for stopping by and, and checking us out. Let's see what else. Um, the puppy breath, yes please, from Strong Sick. Puppy breath is the best. Um, Wigglebutt's Adventures, thanks for joining us. Liam, hello. Best to do it, nice to see you again. This kind of makes me want to get dogs again, but there's so much work. Yeah, that's like the never-ending double-edged sword, isn't it? Hi there, Frank. Thanks for stopping by. I usually have Drew here to, to help me with some of this stuff, but maybe I need it. Everybody got fresh bags. Um, if any families are watching right now, um, if I either haven't gotten to you or if I forgot to mention it, um, we're going to start doing the family visits this upcoming weekend. Um, so think about like what families sometimes do. They'll either, well, we, they usually pick a day and time. We find that's work best, especially when we have um, 12 families that we're coordinating on a weekly basis. So what works best is to pick a day and time that we can count on that's every week or every other week or whatever your schedule allows. Um, and because we have so many people that uh, we're very flexible, we can do um, Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, evenings, weekends, um, that sort of thing. We're very, very flexible. Um, and some families, um, you can use it however you want to use it. You, we basically, we, we offer it to you and you can do what you want with it. So... Um, some families will come over every week um, religiously and stay for 45 minutes to an hour, snuggle their puppy and play, and just kind of get to know them. Um, and then some families will do it every other week. Um, and I haven't noticed, or I guess we haven't noticed, like the families who came every week had a, like, a better bond with their puppy versus the families who went every other week. Um, there's no significant difference, or it's really more about um, how much you want to come see them, how much you, um, how much work, like how your schedule really works. Um, we found that if they meet their families like a first time, and then have like a follow up where they can meet their with their families come over, and they spend time with them when they've already met them. So meaning when they saw them, they already knew them. They remembered their scent. It wasn't a first meeting that was causing a little stress. And so, um, that would, so, I mean, if you're, if the puppy was visited, like as a, an initial meeting and then you came back as a reminder, even FaceTime, I know it sounds so silly. People have given me the weirdest looks when I talk about FaceTiming their puppy. Um, 
but we had a family, or I guess a couple, we had a couple who lived about four hours away in Madison, Wisconsin, and um, they would, they actually, they would have driven down to see him, but um, it was around the holidays, and they had all kinds of, you know, family functions and stuff with both sides of the family. So, uh, we hung on to him for a few extra weeks, and because they were so far away, they were unable to visit, because even in their free time, they were busy. Um, and so they did FaceTime, like, every Wednesday at 6.30 in the evening, and they sent us um, a t-shirt or a blanket or some, something. Uh, we always recommend people, um, I know it's, it's odd to wear, send a used t-shirt to us, what we say is um, put on a t-shirt that's clean, just sleep in it overnight, and then um, put it in an envelope and, and send it. It doesn't have to be a dirty t-shirt. We just um, suggest you make it smell like your scent. Um, or like if you get a dog toy, um, put it under your shirt and go to sleep at night. Um, like just, you know, so it's against your skin. Um, so then when we get those items, when we do the FaceTime calls, we, you know, if this is the, this is the toy or the blanket or shirt or whatever. We'll bring the puppy over onto it and kind of snuggle them up on it so that as they're hearing your voice and seeing your image, they're also taking in your scent. And so, uh, but that couple from Madison, Wisconsin, they were only able to do the FaceTimes. And they sent us the, the t-shirt. And um, the first FaceTime, he didn't really see their face. They don't usually notice the phone the first time. Um, but the second time he started to look at the phone and third time he started interacting with the phone where he would paw at the image and he would, um, lick the, he would lick where the girls were on the phone. And so when they came, so that litter was ready to go home. It was like December 13th and he didn't go home until like mid January. So he was about 12 weeks old and when they came to pick him up. It, I wish I should have recorded it. He um, was so happy that he, I, I had him in my arms about to give him to them, hand him over. And before I could even really hand him over, he leapt out of my arms and into their arms. And then he was, um, give, he was kissing them so quickly, like back and forth, that he was getting himself... Um, like twisted and caught and almost falling because he was switching from one to the other and like unable to figure out or unable to decide who he wanted to kiss more. And so, um, like all of that, uh, that relationship that they had been, that they had built with him was purely over FaceTime. So, uh, for long distance families, it's really nice to be able to have a similar option where they can get to know their puppies. Each of our dogs, when we got them as puppies, our breeders didn't offer like anything remotely close to that, and um, it was kind of like it kind of, you know, I, that's kind of what we expected, you know, for the dogs to be a little timid. But especially when we were getting them after our son died, um, it would have been really awesome if our kids had been able to interact with her a little bit and get to know her a little bit so that then when we brought her home she the kids were familiar familiar to her and in this strange environment then they felt you know she would feel safe with our kids you know while discovering this new environment and so that's kind of like how we that's kind of how we came up with the idea of doing the visits because it doesn't take much for them to start forming relationships and it makes the transition to their homes with their families so much easier and so much less stressful. So, and then when you add in the, um, the issue of house training and potty training, all that stuff, when their um, environment isn't as stressful, when they know their families, um, all of that stuff just, because uh, a, lot, a lot of accidents or potty training issues can um, can be helped by reducing or eliminating stress in the dog's life. Um, kind of like
packages. It's going to be loud so I have my hair dryer. I don't really like that. It feels nice though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see the pulps. I have this on the lowest setting, by the way. This is on the lowest setting. She's eyes. <laughs> They've never experienced the wind before, so this is kind of this is a little weird. They look much more comfortable. They're not shivering like they were. Hey, Dad's home. Dad, are we having lunch for dinner? Oh, hush, Ron. Okay, and then sugar. We can rather and make a bed. Let me help you out, sweetie. Let's get rid of the wet, dirty ones. Make sure 
Gotta change Robin's pen stuff. Why? Um, just because it's been used for a couple days now and we need to change it out. So puppies. Can I hold the baby mm -hmm. now? Um, go get up on our bed and sit in the very middle, crisscross applesauce. Oh, Mom, I need I need hand sanitizer. Well, first do the hand sanitizer. Careful, oh. sweetie pie. Okay. Good. Mom, can you help me? Sure can. Mm -hmm. Rub my hand. Do your other hand. Okay. Very good. All right. All right. Go sit down. I can't. Mochi is gonna go and sit with our Isabella, our four-year-old. Um, and then our um. So our daughter, our youngest daughter is four, okay, okay, and so each time we have a litter of puppies, she always, she thinks of them in terms of how she thinks of her and her siblings, and so um, she labels them by their birth order. So our firstborn daughter is, the, that puppy she calls the May baby because our firstborn's name is May, and so then the second born girl is the Bella baby, she calls the Bella baby. And then as the litter kind of grows up, she always focuses on whoever the second born girl is because she identifies with them as the second born girl. And she thinks they're very special. Right, Bella Bella? Yeah. The Bella babies are always very special. Okay, Robin, so let's... What's your pie? Yeah. She goes off the dirty. I felt it. 
empty now. sounds much further away and then when you're with Bella over here you sound super close so like it was really quiet when yeah it even bad. yeah it's probably because the microphone is right there I think yeah I think that's what it is so. Bella this is just a little padding because none of us want to sleep on a hard plastic Oh, look at them all. I know, aren't they precious? Oh. Should we take a picture? Yeah, that's so stinking cute. It's a basket full of puppies. Here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Bella. Just in case anybody is wondering what Drew is owing and eyeing over. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. That's where the puppies are while I... Do their bed. They're a little basket all, all shivering together. I mean, take it off the... I put Pokey back with her friends. Bella. Uh, you did a very good job. Bella, can I help? There they are. They're so patient while their bed gets remade. They're shivering a little, so let's we'll get them back on the heating pad. Ugh, sorry, I hope I'm not making you throw up. Here. Can you help them out? Robin doesn't really pick them up anymore. They're such big potatoes. Now, I'm sure many of you can see the uh, issue that this might become with their crawling abilities coming along. Um, very soon, we're going to put them in one of those uh, like extra, extra large crates. I like to call them doggy apartments because they look like they could be two, two stories for our Cavaliers. Um, but... We'll put them in a really, really big crate so that we have room for all the pine. We have room for mom. We have room for the litter. And we have room for them to, like, you know, kind of mingle a little bit. We don't want to give them too much room because then they'll have that space or where they can be like, oh, I can step aside here and go potty without going in my bed. So we do limit their space a little more. Um, it's for training purposes. No, um, we're not... We're not doing it to restrict them in any way, just only restricting their potty. So, um, but they're in that crate for about like a week, I think, while they um, pick up the, the commands and put it together. And then once they, once they get to that point where they've learned the command, 
um, probably about a week from now, next Thursday or so, we will move them out into our dining room in a corner in our dining room. And we have an X pen right there, which ha an X pen has those, um, those metal wire panels and we size it down so that um, it has room for the potty pan. It has room for a little setup like this for them to snuggle and see mom. And then just like room for food. And so it's like just a smidge more freedom than the crate while they get um, acquainted and adjusted to uh, the puppy pen sort of feel because it's a much different setup than what they're used to with the whelping pool. Um, in the puppy pen, there's like a bathroom area and a bedroom area and a living room area. So they have to get to kind of get used to that as opposed to right now where it's just, they just lay in a pile and um, eat, sleep, and poop. They start learning a lot more of their, they start learning more social etiquette and how to um, how to interact with each other, puppy manners, and that's where we try to kind of assist a little bit when it comes to families and why we try to find out your situation. You know, do you have cats? Do you have other dogs? Do you have kids? Um, because then, when if we have a if we have a family with um, four small children, um, we are happy to spend extra time with um, their puppy and our kids to really socialize them and get them comfortable and happy with kids. So, um, like in the next week or so, there's going to be a lot of changes coming this group's way. Yeah, hopefully by this time next week, they're out in the dining room. And then we kind of, so when we bring them out into the house, um, the whole point is to start exposing them to, how do you get my hair on you? Um, is to expose them to everyday craziness. You know, they're not gonna go home and just be, um, we don't want them to only be used to just quiet, dark areas. We want them to um, be okay with your door being knocked on and be okay with the doorbell going off or be okay with your phone ringing and um, somebody walking through the house, just, you know, um, the little, the little noises houses make during the night when it's quiet. Um, that's why we bring them out into the middle of our house and we start with them just in a corner because in that corner, from their perspective, they can see the big world that they're looking at, but, um, they're hidden behind... Um, it, like they cannot be seen very well from um, the other rooms and so they can kind of take in what they're hearing and what they're seeing um, like from the safety of that corner that's far away and uh, so it helps get them kind of adjusted before we bring them out into the very open pen which is like it's at the bottom of our stairs that go to the upstairs and it's about as central in our house as it can be um, and so they uh, when they transition there um, that really really helps um, it really puts their potty training to the test because that pen is much more open uh, in our last group of puppies um, I think we're just getting better at potty training them but our last group of puppies did great usually um, even up through eight weeks They'll still have some accidents, but our last group of puppies, I don't think we wiped up potty accidents like the last two weeks or so that they were with us um, because uh, they had it down really well. So I hope that we get these guys just as well trained. Um, but now that their eyes are opening and they can see everything that's going on and they can see who these pe these like critters are that are beside them, they're able to, they're, they can see the effect that they have on the world when they um, paw at something, when they cry, when um, when anything happens, they can see the, the effect. Um, and so it's a lot of learning. 
and it's a little uh, intimidating so don't be worried if you're one of our families and your puppy seems a little um, sluggish or uninterested it's just because they're overstimulated they're getting all there's getting so many they're receiving so much stimuli all at once that they um, aren't used to and I, I really I always hope that their ears open just a couple days after their eyes you know like let's give them kind of some slack let them uh, adjust to one and then we'll go to the other but biology is not that kind so still shivering. I suppose it's time to heat back up. Hi, Shalini. Oh, and you said hi to Shar. Shar, you must be on. Hi, Shar. I'm sorry I missed you if you, if you said hi. Oh, sure, I see. Are all eyes open? Um, you know, I'm not quite, I'm not too sure. I think everybody has them starting to open. Miss Annie, who is um, formerly Magenta, um, or no, I'm sorry, not Annie, um, Pinky, who is now Mochi, her eyes are the most open, and she got, she's so cute. She's got big old brown eyes on her uh, cute pudgy puppy face it's ah she's precious and they all they all kind of get that same sort of look it's it's awesome they, they look like little stuffed animals they're such an amazing little breed of dog we had no idea that such a breed with so many amazing qualities and attributes existed you know, it was one of those things, like, when we were first researching Cavaliers, it just sounded too good to be true. It really did. And I, so I'm really surprised that, really surprised that they are as amazing as, um, as we were reading that they were. Because you know how that stuff can be. One person or ten people have a good experience, and so they rave that it's the answer. So we we're a little so skeptical. I feel like they deserve a little a category all of their own. It's like, they're not just dogs, but they're amazing dogs. This breed, I feel like they should receive some sort of, uh, some sort of great for emotional support animals or psychiatric service dogs because they really truly are I want to introduce you guys to Paris. She is one of our Blenheim moms. She is, she's, oh, she's so adorable. Um, she has, she's a Blenheim that is, has a lot more chocolate, a lot more of the chestnut on her. Excuse me. Um, but she is our 12 year old's ESA, our 12 year old's emotional support dog. And um, she, for whatever reason, um, she embodies like everything that is amazing about Cavaliers and that's why she so easily ended up as an ESA because, um, my daughter, she, if she needs something, she has, um, she has very significant anxiety, like debilitating. But when Paris, if we have people come over, for instance, and her anxiety is getting to her, Paris will, like, see it from across the room and just jump into her lap and just lay down and just be there with her. And, um, or, like, if they're playing or if Paris is busy and um, she hears May telling me a story and she hears her getting upset, Paris will stop what she's doing and go over to her. And it's like, she doesn't ask for anything. She just goes over and she's just is with her like in that moment. And um, 
it's just it's so amazing to see we we joke that uh she is paris is or i'm sorry may is paris's emotional support human because um when may was gone at her grandparents house for like five or six days um she was gone for her grand to at her grandparents house out of state and usually she takes paris with her on trips but she didn't that time and when she, like the day after she left um Paris usually sleeps with me at night of course and so the first morning after she had her first night where May didn't come get her and bring her to bed Paris was so like depressed overnight she just she went from being her normal happy ch chipper cheerful self to um like she wouldn't play with anybody she would just lay on the floor with her head kind of between her front paws and just watch the world go by. It was so sad. I felt my heart just broke for her. Um, but when May came home, she was the happiest dog I've ever seen. And they are a really, a really great pair. And we actually, we almost didn't get Paris. She's a litter mate to um, the dog that we actually had originally wanted. And... When we were looking at her litter mate, we saw Paris, and Paris is another one whose breeder named her, because I'm not good at names. Um, but Paris, uh, we saw Paris, and she was just so beautiful, and she took to us, really, she took to people, kind of like, um, and I'll, show, I'll be showing you guys how they um, respond to us better in the early days as opposed to some others. Um, they will all, um, they all always, you know, as cat breeders, take to us, to people, you know, at some point during this process, but there's always a couple that stand out in the beginning that take to us a lot earlier. And um, so when we were looking at Pom Pom, Paris's sister, we, Paris came over and she, was being very much like how Moji is and um and some of our others but uh so I asked if she had already had a deposit on her and she didn't and I couldn't believe it. she didn't have a deposit on her she was so beautiful and so I took that as a sign and we just went ahead and got her too and so like it it was so close to not happening and she's become such a such an integral part of our family and her puppies are going to be absolutely beautiful. And so we'll probably be, um, I'm not quite sure when we'll be having a letter from Paris. It won't be, it won't be anytime soon because she's not quite old enough. Or say not anytime soon, but probably not like, Probably not within the next six months or so. You know, it's interesting. When Robin went in to check on Daisy's puppies, she stepped into the pool and all of the puppies, like you just saw with Robin, they usually stir or wake up when mom steps in. Well, when Robin stepped in, um, Daisy's puppies didn't stir or wake up, but then when I brought Robin out and Daisy came in, Daisy just quietly stepped in and all of them, they're all on their heads, went up and everybody knew she was there. So I don't know if they could just like recognize her footsteps or her scent or what, but they knew that Daisy was there um, and she knew when Robin came in that it was not Daisy. See you that you're back. Hi, Diana. You're in love with these puppies. I am too. It's going to be hard to say goodbye to these guys. It's a good thing that they all have such good homes because that's what makes it, that's what makes it easier to say goodbye to them is knowing, knowing how happy they're going to be. We had a gentleman over yesterday, the day before, I think. Um, and it's just, it's so nice to meet you guys in person and find out kind of where your interest in dogs came from and uh, where you've been, I guess, 
with animals until running into us and we just hear a lot of great stories and we really enjoy getting to know you guys. So with these guys all napping, um, I'm kind of not doing much. I'm going to take the stream into uh, the bathroom where Daisy and her puppies are. I hear them all um, shouting at Daisy <laughs> for something. And Robin is over here staring at the door, um, wanting to go fix it. So I'm going to take you guys in there uh, so that we can see what Daisy and her, her puppies are up to. <laughs> There's her. Our stairs. The dogs got so used to them that uh, now that they're not pregnant, they still want them to get up on our bed. Robin, Daisy doesn't want you in here. Oh, Daisy's not in here. I bring a live stream in here. Uh, yeah, I know, but um, Robin's babies are all sleeping and I'm sorry. came out last um one of you guys said I think Daisy had another puppy and Drew and I were just gabbing and we looked at her leg and there she was and I was like wait a minute but we had a one <laughs> so she was an awesome little surprise Shame. oh oh yeah we had you this precious little thing oh, I don't know if you noticed but the tip over here has a little white. Oh my goodness. And so the very the tip of her ear when she's an adult is gonna have and have that white on it. It has to be it's gonna look like a tag. You're so cute. But her name is Pippa. I thought that was perfect. She's like a hair petite. And I just thought, um oh and Robin wants to come in, so let me shut this other door so that Daisy doesn't. You guys can see how <laughs> now she's gonna check out Daisy's food. And if you're, if anybody's wondering, 
it, um, Robin being in here doesn't make Daisy not want to take care of them or anything. It doesn't look like upset her. Um, if anything, I don't, I don't think they even really notice. We're going to try to reintroduce Robin and Daisy together outside and see if we can get them getting along so that they can kind of just be, um, we can lax up a little bit, I guess. But this is why it's kind of nice. Daisy can get a little bit of a break. She can go around outside with her buddies. Um, and that helps, you know, when they're wanting to, um, when they're, when Daisy's, you know, burnt out and wanting to go lay down and not come nurse them. Um, that little break helps. And then if they got a feeding off of Robin, it's just one less um, feeding they'd have to do. Can they eat? You're a good girl. You're such a good mom. You're such a good mom. You're like, wait, there's milk here? There's milk and there's no mom? No mom? But what the hell? That you black cat? Both Blackjack and Cheyenne are nursing on Robin right now. <laughs> oh, poor girl. <laughs> poor girl. You won't always see the mom be so willing to nurse. I don't know if it's like a nurse trying to save it for their puppies or what, but... They won't always be um, so caught, or sometimes they'll be, it's like they'll be territorial of their nipples. She's not so worried about keeping her puppies clean, but man, she is good at making sure everybody is fed and happy. Daisy, on the other hand, um, producing milk is not her strongest suit, so um, that's kind of why we let Robin do this when she's willing. Um, <laughs> and she was really excited to meet Daisy's puppies, too. And now that she's met them, whenever uh, you know, Daisy's in here and she can't come in here, she'll scratch it. Go for even Daisy. Daisy will be growling at her and she'll just keep scratching. Oh, Robin's on my boot. Robin, get Hey, hey.
before someone gets in it. Can you clean that before someone gets it? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll get it. So she'll clean Daisy's puppy's butts, but she, if they poop out here, she won't eat it. Other. There you go, Daisy Doodle. Oh, Robin, you stay out. No, Robin was just trying to sneak in. Poor Daisy, she's just trying that so she's trying so hard. Sweetie, let me help you out. There you go. There's like a very particular way she likes to lay when she's nursing. And unfortunately, this way she likes to lay is not very conducive for nursing. She kind of lays upright, and that means that puppy's got to be underneath her to, to get milk. She makes it difficult for them when we've got a group as strong and healthy as we do. Um, 
it challenges them and they learn so much. I mean, if she's out of reach, they will, if they've got some sort of obstacles, you know, if they're crawling around over here, um, and she keeps moving around when they're trying to get to her, they get very good, they get very fast at being able to follow her, and she isn't able to kind of get away from them when she's got all six that have kind of learned her tricks. And so it's, it's, it's fun to watch, uh, to watch it unfold over time. Yes? Yeah. Here's your popcorn. Hi, Rug.
That's all right, Daisy. Dad told me you were outside. I was outside looking for you. Um, I realized I didn't go over names. Uh, this is Cheyenne. Cheyenne, where's your sisters? Cheyenne, Pippa, and Pippa's a little girl like her mom. You can see her kind of compared to Cheyenne. Cheyenne will probably be, um, her, so their dad is a more standard size. Daisy's or the other litter had um, all of her puppies were like Pippa's size, but it looks like Cheyenne, um, she's got a bigger frame, and so she probably inherited her dad's, her dad's um, frame. Whereas little Miss Pippa is probably going to be about Daisy's size. <laughs> Daisy's not gentle. It's like the, the puppy's got to learn to live with it. So that's Pippa. And then this is Miss Della. And my daughter pointed out um, something super sweet. I didn't even realize this before. But um, the thumbprints on her head look like a heart. And I thought that was super sweet because she's absolutely adorable. How pretty is her face? Sometimes it's, it gets hard because like, um, we, we are gonna, we keep, or we will start keeping uh, a female here and there. Um, we stagger our dog, as we get our dog, we stagger them so that they're all a little bit different ages. Um, we try to, we want to have like a puppy that we're raising. Um, our first dog, Missy, she's, um, four or five, so I mean she's she's gonna have a nice long break, and I don't know if we're even gonna break her again. So um, we're gonna give her a nice long break, and we might just spare. Um, so uh, I mean we won't get rid of her or anything because she's very special to us. But um, because we, I mean we don't we're not gonna we don't want to breed our dogs like through uh, old age and stuff. So. Um, we want to have like a puppy kind of up and coming, I guess, as our other dogs um, kind of retire, get spayed, and enjoy their years. Um, and so, since we just got one, I'm not allowed to keep one yet. But, uh, um, I always love seeing the. Hey! Hey, little, little Miss Della. Hi, it's okay. Where's your mom? You got she got it? No? Yeah, let's get her in. that you were talking about maybe importing a stud dog from England. Um, because one of, one of, I think it's Daisy's, one of her ancestors was imported. Um, and so we're thinking of importing a stud, a tricolor stud to mate with our blown ladies. <laughs> it's okay. But we thought that would be really, really cool to um, import a stud and then mate him with one of our girls. And then that's when we keep one of our puppies so that we can create our own, like, our own Red Barn family gene line. And we would, we would like to do it with, you know, the 
the best quality and so um, importing a nice stud dog and then um, mating him with one of our dogs that we kind of um, built our little Red Barn Cavaliers around and then that would be the start of our family line of Cavaliers. You can really see the Merle in him right now. And the what what it is basically they have there's I believe it's an allele they have um, that is a recessive gene and when it comes out this uh, lighter black that you see it's just regular black fur that has um, it has a, the, like very well placed white fur that mixes in so like finely that it looks like a lighter color, but it is indeed just like black fur. Um, just has some of the white um, throughout it, and that's what gives it the lighter appearance. And then those spots are where those um, the white fur follicles um, did it take basically. And so like it's kind of like it's like that's the black that he was supposed to have there, if not over the marble. That's one way of looking at it. Oh my gosh, she was so pretty. I love her markings. It's gonna be so hard to say goodbye to you, Cheyenne. It's okay, Daisy Doodle. Gotta get the charger. Aw, Daisy, everybody was our son. What happened? You're a good girl. I don't know if like the mom's personality, um, I don't know, I, I wondered if um, the puppies kind of take anything from their mom, like learning wise, if they pick up any of her habits or her attributes. Um, just because I had noticed that uh, like Missy's dogs, her puppies seem to, they, like, we can almost see her personality in them, her mannerisms, I guess. And, um, Daisy is such an attentive mother that I, um, I'm really curious. I mean, it could just be, like, a genetic thing. She just has a really good temperament and personality, and so her puppies do too. But I've just been curious if, um if they're able to pick that up from her just by how she's, how attentive she is and um, the way she responds to them. She's very quick to respond. Um, and she's, she's always uh, meeting their needs. And so I'm just curious if her providing for them so well in these early days, especially if, um, if that has anything to do with them growing and getting a little bit older and also becoming very affectionate and loving because her puppies um, from her first litter went home and 
we heard back from every single family in that letter about how amazing they were, how like blown away that they just went above and beyond what they expected from Cavaliers. And uh, we've had letters from Missy, we had a letter, or we have had a letter from Rhonden, all right, and then this letter. Uh, and we haven't, we have not received such a such a consistent. Um, uh, I, I consistent is not the right word, but um, I think every single family, she had five puppies, every single family got in touch with us month, two months, three months down the line and um, sharing just how amazing they were and how popular they are in the neighborhood and um, Cindy does Cavalier Club, so Cavalier, uh, Louis made lots of friends at Cavalier Club. Um, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about her letters that, uh, there's like this little spark that they have. I'm going the wrong way, boo. Oh, <laughs> gotcha.
daisy doodle. You're so, you look such a wonderful job. Look at all that milk you got. I'm over here saying you don't produce enough for Daisy. You've got the prettiest babies. They're, they are so mobile for their age. It's just it's amazing to me. Um, Missy's puppies and Robin's puppies, in our experience. Um, you know, not that they're, there's nothing wrong, like, wrong with them or anything. It's just in these early days, they sleep like more. They sleep much more heavily, um, and then and Daisy's guys, they get around a lot, I guess. And they, if they find themselves away from everybody, they can get back pretty quickly. They they get on the move pretty fast. But we'll be popping in and out. Um, I've got to run out for a little bit, but Drew's gonna be here, so he'll probably stop in and. Chat for a bit. I'm gonna move this so everyone can see. Oops. Did again, I'm so sorry get out of the habit of shutting off my bathroom light.
It's okay. Yeah, I know. Just doggies are out there barking. It's okay, sweetie. Your your pack is out there barking. It's okay. Oh. Oh. Can I see? Can I see your puppies? Some more food, please. Oh, 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 squeak, 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 squeak. Oh, squeak, 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 squeak. How are we doing, guys? Oh, goodness, hi. You know what? Maybe I'll go grab the scale and do some quick weights. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I love you too. I love you very much too. Oh, are you protecting them from me? Hmm? I just want to pet them. I just want to pet them. Are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? You think I kicked you out? I said I would beat you out. Thank you, food. Just bear with me. Click. What a good girl. see how well it sounds. I've got my AirPods in. I'm just listening to it. It sounds a lot better. Okay. So, I did not realize that this camera I mean, it's, I mean, it's just a phone or an old phone that we had uh, but apparently the microphone is directional and Now you guys can, can hear it. 
hear those squeaks too, so now you guys can hear the squeaks a little bit better. Little puppy squeaks. Snoodling him, that's all, don't worry. I like Mr. Blackjack. He's so sweet. Cheyenne. You hungry, Cheyenne? And for anybody who, who might be new and um, you know, hasn't uh, gone to our website um, to see the puppies that are still available, it's the, the three boys. So you've got Boo, Moo, and Blackjack. These three are still available. Good job, Blackjack. Look at you. Watch out, Boo. Make a dinner to go out. I know, Piggy. I know, Piggy. Ta. We got all six. Six nursing away. Hey there, Shalini. I've been uh, flipping through the uh, the chat. And I saw that you got on a little bit ago, right after Mr. Michael Bryant. Um, let's see who we got here. We've got um, Mr. Tim Brown, I don't know if you're still on, but yeah, it's uh, Orange passed away a couple days ago. Elizabeth right now is uh, putting together a like a memorial video for him because a lot of people were really um, a lot of people were really uh, attached to him. A lot of people had a, quite the bond with with little Agent Orange. 
Um, and so she's putting together a, a nice little video for everybody, kind of like a, a little farewell sort of thing. And then uh, this weekend we're gonna bury him and, and his brother. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, yes, Shalini, I, I agree. It's nice to see uh, see these puppies doing well. They are all gaining weight steadily, and they have nice, nice full bellies almost all the time. Yeah, uh, you two, you two are quite right, Heather. Um, it's nice to know that you are. Uh, listening and, and making some soup. What kind of soup are you making? I'm, uh, I'm interested. I love soup. <laughs> there is nothing better than a nice warm bowl of soup on, uh, on a, a, a brisk day. Ooh, yum. Potato soup. Ah, I'm jealous. Man, I'm getting hungry now. It's, it is... Oh, past lunchtime. Past lunchtime here. But these six are gonna have a little snack. In fact, I'll probably let them uh, nurse for a little bit and I'll, uh, I'll let the camera stay in here. And then uh, I'll move it back to uh, Robin's pups uh, in like 15 minutes or so. Yeah, uh, leek and potatoes uh, soup is is very very tasty, very nice. Oh goodness. Okay, sweetie, sweetie Daisy, walk this way. Excuse me. Where are you going, Blackjack? What's up? you guys but uh, during this time of year I always want to make chili and I'm uh, uh, one of the uh, I made I made uh, chili for Elizabeth when we were dating and she and 
and she really enjoyed it. And um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but whenever I do chili, I serve it with uh, cornbread. And you take you know, a nice big hunk of cornbread, put it in your bowl, and then pour the, uh, the chili over top of it. And it's perfect. That and with a bunch of uh, shredded cheese. Yeah, absolutely, Shalini. When it gets super cold, a nice, a nice hearty stew is the best. Ooh, char, yeah, Fritos and chili. That's another one you just got me there. That's I, I love Fritos and chili. Have you ever had uh, um, what's it called? Not, it's not a walk. It's I mean, some people do walking tacos, but it's uh, well, like walking chili where you take the bag that the Fritos are in and you just pop it open and then you pour the chili into the bag along with the cheese and you just kind of like mix it up in there and then eat it right out of the Fritos bag. It's, it's the best. <laughs> Yeah, Heather, it's uh, it's it's really convenient. It's uh, I know it sounds really silly, but uh, yeah, a, a walking chili bowl, or I think is what it's called, something like that. It's uh, it's pretty pretty convenient. Oh yeah, sausage, mash, and onions. Oh man, you guys are ah, killing me right now. I'm so hungry. <laughs>
kicked your puppies off. Why did you do that? Not very nice. Are you off? No, no, no. Stay.
balance everything.
Emily, have you been looking for your phone? Have you been looking for your phone? Yeah. Oh, wait. No, but I'm, I was having the issues with that, but I knew a screen checker oh. on that for him. And then there was one guy. Do you have a screen cover on? Yeah. Yeah, it'll just explain. Oh, look, somebody! Oh, right there. <laughs> the puppy pooped right here. Oh, Come on. Puppy. Duty calls. Duty calls. Good girl, our hub and dog. Why are you Good girl. The poop. The baby's poop. <laughs> no worries, Heather. <laughs> Good boy, Chance. When I was working as a nurse, I used to tell people who were, I would ask them if they had had a bowel movement, they would always be embarrassed, and so I would tell them, if you're not pooping, then I'm worried, so I want to know if you're pooping. Chance is a good pooper. What's up, Brenda? Oh, why does Robin eat the baby's poop? That's what mama dogs do when um, they're taking care of their babies. Yeah, they keep them clean, just like I kept you clean. Mm -hmm. I just didn't use my tongue to do it. Mm -hmm. But your butt got the most prenatal treatment because we have your little baby wipes and warmers. Yeah. So they're always pre-warmed yeah. for your sensitive, yeah. sensitive little butt cheeks. Yeah, we. Um, yeah. Uh, the, did you hear what Mom said? No. Mom was telling you that we had this little um, plug-in. Baby, wipe, wipe yeah, yeah, baby, baby wipe warmer. It would warm up your wet wipes so they're nice and warm whenever you went to go wipe your little booty after you poop because you are so sensitive to cold. They would? Yeah, whenever we use. So then when we use cold ones, like we're a store and it wasn't warmed up, you would hate it. Oh, you'd hate it. Yeah, you, you'd, have, you'd have a fit if there was a, if a cold wet wipe touched your little booty cheeks. Was it okay? No, you, you didn't. You were just, you were just you'd pull your butt away. Yeah, you, you'd be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Oh, wow. Protected. You got my girly purple and the flowers. Yeah, the flowers. Oh, that's still pretty. I like that. I like purple. I like the it's my style. I like the color purple. Wait, you know what? Huh, there's one brownie that you might like. I like the color purple. No. Purple or don't like it, that's fine. Yeah, don't worry about that, then don't. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, I love it. I love it. Wait, huh? You don't, yeah, I'm so confused. It is kind of a weird... I think that, like, you had to pick that one out, and then when I got here... You were like, hmm, you were all worried about that. Or, you know what? I think you got it from me, you got it from May, and you got wrong size. Yeah, uh, you guys got the wrong size for me. Because May likes the sky color. Hi, Mom. When I took this phone case off, oh, yeah, it got that out. Dad. I mean, Mom. When I took it off, it's a little so more got cracked. Oh, no. Never mind. It's for the. It's for the SD. The, the, that's for the. We can have double protected. So oh, is that SD1? Yeah. yeah. We can well, still have double protected, we though. Have, yeah, we can still do the double protected. I swear we had any more cases for those things.
like an yeah. iPhone 12. It does kind of look, uh... Thank you! You're welcome, bud.
just so everyone is aware, uh, this is um, uh, Mochi. And this one over here is Annie. So this was, this was Magenta. This was Pinky slash Mochi. Yeah, Jesse Chance. Oh, um, this is now Henry, so <laughs> I don't know if Elizabeth explained to you, but I'll say it again just in case anybody uh, is hearing it for the first time. Uh, the people that are adopting him, this is Ocho, right? Remember? So they want to name him Henry the Eighth. So he's going to be Henry Ocho as, uh, as the gag. That's going to be his full name on like his registration. So... I, we thought that that was awesome. Um, and then, come on, think. Uh, Charlotte, there we go, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte, what a good girl. Hi, baby, yeah. Oh, it's just, it's just me. It's not mom, it's not mom. It's just me. Hi, sweetie. Oh, oh yeah. Why do you guys lay on top of Ocho? Poor guy. Well, the littlest guy gets laid on top of. Henry the Ocho. For coming out 126 grams, little guy. You have done really, really awesome. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mochi. I'm so sorry, Mochi. I didn't mean to hurt you. Your ears are already getting big. Holy smokes. No. While we were talking about um, Bradley's one bubble apes, uh -huh. I was like, I should do the same for my son. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> well, that is hilarious. Him and his sensitive bum. Mochi, 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 mochi. Hi. What's up? I think your puppies want you. Because, oh man, you feel full. You feel quite full of milk. Yeah, get up. Should we move them into the crate here pretty soon? Yeah. Ooh, you've got a ton of milk, sweetie. You need to go and feed them. Charlotte, what are you doing, Charlotte? Jesse, whoa. Twitchy Central. Chance, chance, chance. Whoa. Squeak. Hi, chance. Hi, chance. You're not my mom. You're not my mom.
some photos of Jesse. Some photos of videos. Guys, I apologize if I get in the way. I'm just trying to get some up close video for for Jesse's family. So, <laughs> <We're up. laughs> oh, if only I'd already been taping. All right, he's in there. Robin just rolled onto his back, so he he lost where he was headed. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Jesse, Jesse. <laughs> See his voice. Yes. Help him out. He had his first bath today because his his mom was a little lazy about cleaning and Cleaning up poopy. Jesse. It's okay, Robin. the best spot. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to go right back there, aren't you? They're about as cooperative as infants when it comes to photographing.
And some of these we've got to focus on dirty butts. Oh, yay, Paul, if you happen to be watching, I got him with his eyes open. Oh, well, Miss Charlotte, you're so stinking cute. Uh, I, can't get, I can't back up enough to get this photo of Charlotte. I wonder if I could, like, slide her back a little. So Heather, if you're still on, I just got it over a minute of um, chance stretching back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I thought it was super cute, so I started recording it, and I could have kept recording it. But he stretched one way and then rolled to the other side and then took a stretch and then rolled to the other side and then took a stretch and then rolled to the other side.
I'll send it to you. I think I can, um, I think I can attach it on the messaging on our website. And that goes for everybody else. I'm, all the photos and things I'm taking, I'm going to send to families. Oh, in fact, I need to take phone photos. Because I'm sure some of these will want to be phone backgrounds. Chance is such a boy already. <laughs> He's such a, like, he, he reminds me of my sons. <laughs> you're, you're such a good puppy. Henry's waking up. Got his first bath today. there. <clears throat> um, I don't, I'm not sure if you're on, but <laughs> I just took a photo of her and there's Chance's feet. <laughs> Silly boy. I pulled him forward to kind of get a better picture of her and then he still he still photo bombs it I think I've got it 
All right, guys, I didn't realize you couldn't see them. He looks like the happiest animal on earth right now. <laughs>
still. <laughs> Miss Charlotte, sit still. I caught that on video, Heather. Chance's little squeak there. Oh yeah, I'm not just using the I was just using the phone number you can oh. if it's like harassing you. Yeah. That's what I hate about this. Yeah. Yes, I guess I hate that they spam you guys. Yeah. It's really bad to look for the school. Because, like, when they get the kids all excited to earn these prizes by doing these fundraisers, and so my friend and Bella bring them home, and they're all excited for the day because the school's gotten them all excited and amped up. And so that puts pressure on us to basically harass our family and friends to either buy stuff or, or like, in this case, um, we use, we, um, sent, like, a pre-written email that just said, hey, come support my school, which would have been fine if it was a one-time email, except that this fundraiser company, they, if it's email or text or whatever, they just do it, they do it over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's really aggravating, and so I hate to put my parents' phone numbers in it, and I hate to put dad's number, or dad's parents, and because I know it's just going to be spamming the crap out of them, and if, I mean, if that was me, I would be really annoyed about it. It wouldn't make me want to donate, yeah. that's for sure. Like, if it was once at the beginning, or once when it's about to end, mm -hmm. that would be... That would be fine. Because I'm a procrastinator, so like a, you know, 48 hour reminder would be fine. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, those fundraisers barely give you any extra. Hmm. Those fundraisers barely give you anything. Like, I know they're trying to make money and stuff, but they get kids all hyped up for, like, basically nothing. Oh. Like, a little stuffed animal that screams every time it hits something. <laughs> Every time the sensor touches something, or there's a, um, like a balloon that pops on grass, or one of those burrito ones that you can find on Amazon and you get for cheaper than that. How much money would you make for one of those good prizes that nobody gets? I'm more willing to do it when we're getting like something small in return for like a candle or something. It's 
usually outrageously priced, but like I would at least like to have something for it when I when I'm donating just because I'm doing it to like support the school. I mean, just they they also have fundraisers, and it's not just this district; it's all districts. Mm -hmm. But they have fundraisers like two or three times a year. They do they a, a they do this fall one, like the beginning of year one, and then they do like a winter pre-Christmas one, and then they do an end of year one. I remember um, by fourth grade, I was getting really tired of them because you don't, you really don't get anything um, for all the money that you spend. And mm -hmm. I didn't really understand fundraisers until this one because I was more, I think it was because I was more focused on the prizes, but um, my. You had to get money and stuff, but like they expect you to be like a millionaire. Hmm. Like a millionaire that is willing to yeah, donate all their money. Seeing this fundraiser's home, and half the time it's not a good time to just drop a bunch of money. Yeah. Not that we should end up having to spend a hundred and fifty oh. bucks in order to because I've got two kids that are, I've only got two kids at first, it was you and Bradley, and now it's Bradley and Fennel. So I've only got two kids that are really subject to Miss Brown. Mm -hmm. I always have two kids. And so two fundraisers, it's like, do we need to double the money that we got to come up with, or double the items I need to buy? I think schools should, um, should encourage it, but not to the extent that it is. Hmm. should even encourage the party more than the fundraiser because the party is what gets kids going. The party is what makes them want to come, want to like get more prizes. Mm -hmm. And that would lead them to donating or buying or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that one time where they had that really boring fundraiser mm -hmm. where you literally got nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was like the heart one. Yeah, and also the one where it was like something about food. Mm, yeah, that's the one. And it kept me. Yeah. I remember I was really disappointed. Well, and, um, wasn't it that you were like, you could actually earn figured out with some of the math that they didn't count your online donations. They only counted your paper ones. Mm -hmm. And so like we had calculated which like prize level you got to. But they had like we had you at like level six. Um, they only had you at like level three because they were only counting half the donations. Wasn't what? it like that? That's not, that's um, maybe I, I mean you were young, you were little when that happened, so I don't know if I shared all that with you. But that was like what we figured out. Or, I mean, that was, or not figured out, but that was like our theory was that they, because um, that was that was the first year that they were doing the online and paper donations, and um, uh, yeah. But there was. Okay. Well, uh, this is my first time at school. I just remember how disappointed you were. And, Even Microsoft in the woods gets more. Mm -hmm. Got ninety one thousand. Were you supposed to get a good prize that year? Or do you just remember that you got less? Like was there something in yeah. particular that you were Nobody getting? Nobody got anything. Oh. Because there were no prizes. I'm talking about the year that you got very little. I heard I that know. it was the American Heart Association one. The the one I don't know if it's like an actual fundraiser, but um, it seems like from Scholastic Book Fair, that was uh, that was a good um, event. Which one? The Scholastic Book Fair. Yeah, 
So, anyway. I was always so disappointed when, when uh, a lot of other people had, uh, like, uh, uh, like, whenever the book fair first opened and, um, uh, the parents did, uh, some kids, some, not, not as, not that many, but some kids uh, come with, um, with money and unless that they didn't, and then, I mean, we learned from you. that. Yeah, we learned from that, but, uh, but it was kind of disappointing. Wasn't there the thing that was in my Yeah, there was one time you gave me, like, a hundred dollars, right? Well, but you're saying that the first time you didn't have money? Yeah. Did um, we have the dates wrong or something? Yeah, we did. Oh. Um. Oh, didn't we send you in, like, that week, though? Yeah. Weren't you able to go? Yeah, we, yeah, I was. Um. You were just out of everything. Yeah, because for some reason, all the kids that came immediately are, like, jealous. Man, it's hot in here. Oh, everyone else? Because it's the fall and the sun was heating up our house, but it's not like cool if it's cool enough outside to cool down. Do you want me to turn the fan on outside to blow it in the air? Blow. Hmm? Ooh, I need to see little Henry. I keep wanting to call him Ojo since. Like well, he's Henry, Henry, Henry the Eighth. Henry L. Ojo. Oh, that makes sense. Henry L. Ojo. I know him. He feels a bit wet. Uh, give him to Robin to show Robin if it's potty shows up. Yeah, it smells like nothing. It's probably just puppy potty. Puppy potty from Westville usually smells like nothing. Yeah, she's not looking it up. It's probably just like uh, Robin licking him or something. Yeah, that might just be from him being playing on. His eyes are fully open. Or what oh, are yeah, these? a lot of them. Um, I oh. think everybody's eyes are open. Well, this eye is like half open. I'm going back there. Sorry. Oh, it's so sweet. You're so sweet. Is your ear open? This one's not as open, just like the eye. But yours are usually open like within that same day. You see who? Aww. You're a good boy.
like, do you like, do you like these? Or? Oh, yeah. There's a fork in here. Oh. If you don't, I mean, it's oh you know, yeah, so it's fork included. It's probably a crappy one. Do you want me to go get a decent one? No. right down the road. Yeah, like, within walking distance. Yeah, it really was. Like, it took longer to drive there than it did to actually um, Be in there. find the fence. Right. Yeah. I was like, it's, it, it took longer to get and the stuff. spend more time in the car. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Jesse is a little twitcher. He's like, Sorry you're feeling sad about Maxie's birthday. I didn't do anything for him. No. Yeah, that's like so we had a cake and Did we do anything last year? We had a cake for him. We were going to do a cake and we sing him happy birthday. Because last year we were going to um, send a cake to heaven, but we forgot. Uh, we said it was sorry to them. I feel like we had a Portillo's cake. Yeah, it was good. Maybe we could do like a Saturday belief. Yeah, I was going to say, we could, you know, we could do, I mean, we got a lot to do, so it's like we, we can bury the two puppies and send them to heaven. Oh, you know what? That's how we'll do Matthew's birthday. Okay. Yeah, okay. the funeral isn't really a birthday, but. <laughs> it, the the uh, Portillo's gig. Kids always. And I think Matthew tried Portillo's gig. Isn't that like one thing that we had him try? Yeah, or you made um, or the cake shake. Yeah, the cake shake. Yeah, you you got like that's maybe that should be our new tradition. Is that for Matthew's birthday we do the Portillo's chocolate chocolate cake? Yeah, I think that that's the we'll do that for on Saturday, Friday. To this range, could you bring me a little range? Sure. Oh wait, you're out. Oh, very, they're already stalled. Oh. 
I didn't know that. I'm sorry. That, uh, I don't know if Stella was a witch like now she believes us. Have you said no? You're on the table No, no. The Doritos.
coming. Come back in here. Come here with your babies. Go see your babies. Come on. Go see your babies. Come take care of your babies. You want to go outside? Come on. Let's go outside this way.
soak today. And I hope we don't have a soak on Friday because then uh, we won't be able to have it on Friday. So I really hope it's wet on Friday and I have no marks. Oh, uh, can you like make it when she's like really calm? Yeah. Okay. Love you. Love you. I'm gonna get her when she's like asleep. Okay. Also, if she's not that crazy. Mm -hmm.
Sorry, all the dogs are barking. Just realized the cord is in the way. They're all headed outside, so they're all excited. There's the babies. sitting by the back door next to each other. Like, so they were getting along? I guess so. I didn't hear any issues while I was in the kitchen. Dad, like, no. it's fantastic. Maybe you can... Oh, oh, oh <laughs> they're all looking for. You can't wipe them all up and then... No, <laughs> oh, look at them go. Oh, hi guys, wake up. Hi, sweetie. Yes, you're a good mom. You're a good mom. That's and awesome. Oh my goodness, you are so full of milk. Holy smokes. You need these puppies to drain you. Ocho, your eyes are open. Ocho. Henry, Henry. Oh, hey, that's right. Henry, Henry the Ocho. Hey, Henry. Hey, buddy. <laughs> he sticks his tongue out when his mom cleans him. <laughs> oh, my God. He's enjoying it a little too much. Isn't he? <laughs> he's doing it. He's like... Oh, that for the camera. oh my god. Oh. Like he closed his eyes and everything and then was sticking his tongue out. Holy, oh jeez, your little collar is around your shoulder. There you go, sweetie. And this, oh god, come on, I keep getting these messed up because I keep wanting to think magenta, but it's not magenta. This is, uh, don't tell me. Mochi, mochi. Mochi, 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 mochi. Okay, ready? Yeah, good girl. Hey, come on. Come on, Jesse. Come on, Jesse. Go get that nipple. I know you're hungry. Oh, come on. Jeez Louise, you big house. It's so dark in this corner. It doesn't usually look so dark. I think. I don't know. I honestly don't know what it is. It does look dark. That's not just my migraine not, vision, right? Yeah, it's not, not just your migraine vision. It looks dark in here. Maybe it's, oh, uh, maybe it's just the time of day and like the, like the sun is going down earlier and stuff. Yeah, there you go. That's way better. Were they whining? Were they crying? No. Oh, no. They were sleeping. They were sleeping, and then she yeah, just... They just look really happy now, because they haven't nursed in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was really surprised when I walked out there, and both Robin and Daisy were sitting at the back door, and then when they saw me, they both started wagging their tails, and then they got up, and... Maybe they got into it, and Missy restored order. Missy, it was, like, when everybody came in, Missy was, like, barking at both of them. Was she doing what I described to you? Where she was, she like, was she was, like, yeah. Uh, she was, she was hurt, or hurt, or directing traffic. Yeah, she was, um. She was directing traffic. It's, it's like she's barking at them, telling them where to go. Yeah, that, and that's almost exactly what was going on, was that she, uh, holy cow, Jesse, you are enormous, man. Um. Chance, you're getting pretty big too. Because uh, it was like she was barking at Robin to go to our door and barking <laughs> at uh, Daisy to go to you the kitchen. There, you yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Let's see what Miss Daisy is doing in here with her crew.
I really think that Charlotte is going to be significantly bigger than the other ones because she was like Cheyenne. It's Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Yeah, and um, yeah. I was actually talking about that on the live stream about um, how she would play. Um, I think she inherited like Spike's genetic for gen genes for her size. Yeah. I mean, she'll still be a female structure size, but it's right. going to be like the size of the women in Spike's line. Yeah. Because uh, she and like so she was the first one that got latched on, and then Daisy like was moving around, and she still held on, mm -hmm. and she held on so tight that she had milk coming out of her nose. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Daisy. Yeah. Stuff that's on poop there, Robin.
before that too.
Is that, is that Jesse? Oh. <laughs> is he upset? <laughs> yeah, he is. I really had to go pee. Oh, did he? Yeah, he shot out of the mic when I gave him his bath. I've actually just been talking about how we have a knack for always getting food on us. There's no, like, prepared for it. And I was scrolling on and I kind of grabbed him all around his midsection. And he just... And he kind of, like, just, like, give him a little bit of a squeeze to yeah. get the suds through his fur. Yeah. And a little bit of squeeze just let him loose and it projectiles for unfortunately the pool stopped it but it hit the wall of the pool because it was airborne dang that's that's got some power then <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rocket <laughs> Like he already pooped a little bit. I think that's why he was whining so hard was that he was just full of poo. But like she got in there real close and kind of gave him a little. Yeah. Yep. You empty. There's gonna be more coming. gotta start training. Good boy. Good boy, Jesse. You feel better now? Not so upset, huh? Yeah, good boy, Jesse. Good boy, Jesse. You guys are big old lumps. Oh, you got poop on your ear, sweetie. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, 
Multi, multi aqui. Not in here, I'm seated. Another chance. I think that tonight we're gonna take some medicine, sweetie. Yeah. It's okay, Henry. It's okay. Okay, Annie, your turn. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, Henry. Whoa, whoa.
Follow you right there, okay?
One. Come on, Bella.
He's the wheeze.
everybody. I'm gonna uh, sign the uh, sign us off for tonight. Oh, little sticker. Fix her collar first. Take that thing off. Not quite big enough yet. Almost. Anyway, hope you guys are all having a nice evening, and we will uh, we will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. play for you guys just before we turn everything off. I don't know where she's trying to go. Alright folks, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.